There are a litany of contemporary political, social, and economic realities that challenge humanity. These issues largely break down to concerns regarding nation-state security, resources, and power. They also include collective threats that challenge society, threats that can be confronted through international law, agreements, and cooperation. However, among these contemporary issues exist concerns about the ideological framework that lies at the foundation of our political, social, and economic constructs. Foremost among the ideas that govern our society is neoliberalism. Ideologically, neoliberalism describes a policy framework that revolves around a free market economy that separates economic control from the public sector and towards privatization. Two influencing factors on that framework is globalization and increasing integration of nation states through social, political, and primarily economic interdependence. And the second is automation or rather the development of robotic, computerized, artificial systems, which illustrates technological advancements capable of being used as a means of production and processing. Seemingly independent constructs, these two items are fundamentally linked to how wealth is dispensed, and more importantly, the way in which labor is distributed. At present, human beings can be accurately described as units of labor, A healthy, well-functioning, and well-trained human being can be considered an asset. It is here that we pose the question, what is the political and economic impact of globalization and automation as it relates to labor displacement and or redistribution? Neoliberalism demands a continuous development of more efficient means of production. This becomes a problem when deliberating concerning the productive capacities of both individual and collective human labor. This has been a long-time governing strategy mandated by the hegemonic powers that exist in the West, primarily in the U.S. and Europe. Its value to the current world order is unquestionable. However, the threats to its viability cannot be ignored. First, globalization. Globalization's use of interdependent economies, increased trade, transnational corporations, and decision-making based on comparative labor advantages often challenges the position and power of human labor in developed nations. Any labor that can be outsourced to cheaper and often equally skilled workers will be redistributed or outsourced from nation state to nation state, and this is enabled by the integration of those states into each other's economies through the means described. This is one of the most central challenges to the continued growth of developed nations. Labor is the most fundamental tenet of a neoliberal capitalist society. Nonetheless, in developed nations, especially in the West, labor is leaving and is being offshored and outsourced to developing nations, which transforms the types of labor required in the West and reshapes labor-based economies in different ways. An in-depth analysis depicts the United States' reducing role in the world's production capacity. The major point of emphasis is that the U.S. has progressively siphoned off the labor component of the supply chain through offshoring. Offshoring describes the shifting of company labor processes abroad in hopes of taking advantage of lower costs. As a result, a number of employment opportunities that were once staples in this labor-based economy are now components of competing and less developed nation states. The United States is simply one example of the challenges that these developed nations, especially in the West, have seen. Labor and employment through manufacturing and production environments have steadily declined in the U.S., as well as its its European contemporaries, both of which are no longer recipients of investment in capital and production. The economic challenge is only one aspect of this trend of labor displacement. The second is political. Despite the separation of public and private interests, the people themselves continue to ask that their representatives provide meaningful solutions to these economic disparities. This economic grievance is often a foremost pillar in many political platforms. Despite this, very little has been done to meaningfully change this trend, and policy has largely been superficial. Major political parties seem to work towards the same end. This is a political issue beyond borders as well. Through trade agreements, import restrictions, and relationships with powerful transnational interests, and more. Conclusively, Globalization's relationship with the labor market has become one that displaces the workforce of developed nations and redistributes them to developing nations in hopes of reducing production costs. Developing nations offer less regulation, lax workers' rights, lower wages, 
absence of robust taxation, and a younger workforce, all of which is supplemented by a steady increase of interdependent economic Globalization is not the only item of concern for labor-based economies. There is an equally concerning threat caused by efficient, productive capacity exemplified by automation and technological advancements. Machines and computerized systems possess the ability to transform the very need of human labor because of their ability to complete tasks faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any individual or collective human workforce can hope to accomplish. It must be stated categorically that there is no sector of the world economy that is exempt from labor and dis employment disruption caused by automation. The threat to the design of neoliberal capitalist economies is far more intimate than the redistributive effects of globalization. Globalization results in human displaced labor, but automation results in human replaced labor. To be clear, many job opportunities in labor-based economies of the recent past and present rely on sets of rudimentary routine tasks. Automated technology and the growing proficiency of artificial intelligence has led to an era where many of the job opportunities that do not require specialization will be completely eradicated. This process has already begun as manufacturing jobs have drastically decreased in recent years in much of the developed world. Machines are no longer tools that assist human laborers in production environments. Now they are workers with the abilities that far exceed anything human muscle can be asked to accomplish, with greater efficiency, speed, accuracy, and without any need for training, health care, benefits, break time, workers' rights. There are examples of this already in full effect beyond the category of manufacturing. Bank tellers and representatives have seen massive reductions in employment replaced by ATMs, mobile banking, and other forms of artificial intelligence, all scheduled to reduce the usefulness of in-person assistance. Food preparation can be outsourced to automated robotics that have been programmed with every recipe and cooking practice. Construction work will no longer require human muscle, as machinery can complete, can complete these tasks as well. The production industry, which is indubitably one of the largest employers in the Western world, will see its duties performed by self-driving vehicles, vehicles that do not get sleepy, and will likely be able to reduce transportation risks like accidents. Any labor that can be programmed into a computerized system can and will be replaced by robotics. The common refrain to this understanding is to identify specialized work as one of the few remaining vestiges of needed human labor. In truth, even that is in jeopardy. For example, the law profession is largely independent on the capacity to research legal code and documents in hopes of identifying anomalies and inconsistencies. Those duties can be outsourced to computerized systems that can complete the research in a fraction of the time with comp incomparably low costs. The same is true for professions in the medical field. Doctors prone to mistakes in malpractice can be replaced by artificial intelligence, capable of diagnosing illnesses with far more accuracy and with a larger access to a library of medical knowledge. If necessary, mechanical robots can be programmed to execute surgeries and accurately provide treatment and cures to ill patients. There is no place in our neighbor force that will be exempt from seeing itself fundamentally transformed by efficient means of production that are in the best interest of companies looking to maximize on efficiency in hopes of improving production in a consumer-driven world. And therein lies our conundrum. Neoliberal capitalism, institutions designed for the benefit of private interests, supplied by labor to provide products for consumption, a cyclical economic structure in which the consumers of labor are also the laborers. What happens when our capacity to labor is brought into question? When our labor is displaced and redistributed beyond the control of any single nation, state, or organization, but because it is the nature of our world order? Increased employment, unemployment, and inequity in certain locations in the world. The extension of power by current world leaders in an attempt to defend against a new balance formed by globalization. One that limits the power of our modern hegemonic nations and disperses it to developing nations who supply the world powers with the means to consume. What happens when our labor is replaced? Economic incentive to use human labor as a pillar in 
labor-based economies is disappearing. And if it disappears, then who will consume what is produced? It is true that society has defined itself by its ability to produce in abundance, but is now under threat of being displaced by the very creations it is designed to maximize its goal. The question is existential. As long as our economic, political, and social institutions are unable to find a way to limit the already increasing economic inequality that has become a staple of our neoliberal system, we must ask ourselves, how does reductions in the need of human labor manifest itself in our social order, and how can we respond to it? In both cases, can we innovate? Is there room in our future to develop industries that will be able to provide labor opportunities as fast as globalization and automation will displace and replace them? If not, can we design an acceptable ideological framework that replaces neoliberalism? And will we be able to transition our institutions to undertake this challenge before an economic and political reckoning? Thank you. There are a litany of contemporary political 